Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to another episode of The Crown, sponsored by IFC, organized by Mr. Surinder Matma, and in the collaboration with Mana TV International. My name is Vidhi Dave, Mrs. India USA 2019 national winner, and I will be the hosting the episode for The Crown. As we always say, crown is just not the made of the stones. It's a journey. And to fulfill that dream, I'm inviting our guest today, who is our former Miss India New York, when she was 16. <laughs> Currently, she is reigning Mrs. India Florida. She is also Mrs. India USA Top 5 finalist and Mrs. India USA Photogenic 2021. Please welcome Aparna Chakravarti. Hello, Aparna. How are you doing today? Hi, Vidhi. How are you? Thank you for such an awesome introduction. I'm really <laughs> I'm happy to be it. here. Um, it's an honor and the pleasure is all mine. <laughs> and first off, I'd like to thank you uh, for taking the time. And also, of course, uh, Mr. Dharmatma Sharanji and uh, IFC uh, for this uh, great honor. We definitely welcome you here and we want to hear a lot of your stories today, Aparna. So let me start with the first question for today's interview. What motivated you in pageants? Looks like your journey is super long and I do want to hear more about it. Well, um, that's a very good uh, point to start. Um, basically, when I was in high school, um, I have always been singing all my life. I'm a trained classical singer um, in Hindustani vocals in Patiala Gharana. And so when I was in high school, I wanted to kind of promote my singing and my friends knew about that. So one of my friends uh, entered my name for this pageant, which was sort of new at the time, because uh, I was only 16, almost 17 at the time. And um, I basically started it to promote my singing to have this platform where I could go uh, show, showcase my talent. And um, that's where my journey began. And then I realized it was so much more than that. And it basically made me who I am today. Um, it gave me that confidence, the boost. Um, just uh, overall, I think um, in my life, everything I've achieved, I always go back to um, Dharmatma Ji and I always have kept in touch with him and I always thank him for introducing me to the pageant world because it just did wonders for, for my life journey. <laughs> Wonderful, wonderful. Um, I kind of connect with you on this as well, because I pretty much have a similar experience as well. My background and the first time when I started the pageant, that was the kick. And that gave me a lot of things moving forward. So we all are in the same journey. <laughs> I must say that. And also, I want to know, where was your childhood? Childhood? Where were you raised? And what's your childhood looks like? Sure. Um, I have a very varied childhood in the sense that I was born in India and then we left um, India when I was just four years old. So mm -hmm. um, I have um, been to Africa after that. And that was a four year uh, stay in Africa. And then when I was seven and a half, eight years old, we came to New York. So most of my life, I grew up um, as a young adult in New York. I went to school there, engineering school. I'm an electrical engineer and I went to the Cooper Union School of Engineering. Um, so my entire high school and college life was in New York. And then, of course, after I got married, uh, we moved around and now we are in Florida. And so when I was growing up in New York, uh, uh, 
the Indian community was very different from what it is today. It was very sparse and, and, and to get any kind of um, classical training in either dance or, or vocals, it was especially difficult. But my parents, um, especially my mom, she sought out the best uh, that she could find at the time. And luckily I was trained in the Patiala Gharana in uh, this music guild in, in Manhattan. And um, oh. yeah, and I remember we just had one car. We used to live in New Jersey at the time. And then we used to travel by train just to come and take, you know, for me to take my lessons. So um, most of my childhood had a lot of arts infused in it, along with education, because I think parents in that generation and of all generations, I think we try to infuse um, children with art. Children with, you, you want to keep them close to, to their roots and at the same time, educate them to the maximum ability. So I basically had that kind of, a, of an upbringing and uh, very humble. Um, my parents um, basically started from nothing and uh, they were both educated. Uh, mm -hmm. My dad was a mechanical engineer, my mom, uh, an accountant and a teacher. Um, but uh, basically they came here to further our, our studies and just ensure that we have a good life. So that's my story in a nutshell. <laughs> I agree. I totally agree and can't agree more because um, how much our parents are doing for us, right? And there's nothing, there's no way to thank them for what they have done for us. So I totally agree with you on that. Um, I know that you also have a national online music school, which is a Sargam. And um, I would like to more about um, know more about that as well, because looks like you have a lot of students. I saw some of your posts. So tell us more what you exactly do, what you teach and what's your business about Sargam? Sure. So basically my whole uh, motto behind this, this business or this project, if you want to call that, call it that, is to carry forward the legacy of a very dying art, which is Hindustani classical music. Um, we hear a lot of music these days, and I think classical is something um, that is very, very close to my heart because I was trained in it, and it's something that I definitely want to pass, pass on to the next generation. So I have um, an online, online uh, class, a uh, few classes through the week. It's, mm -hmm. an hour long, it's an hour long class, and I basically teach um, pure classical uh, using a tanpura that you see that is behind me. <laughs> And then I also have a digital tanpura and a digital tabla and a harmonium. And um, Very it's nice. via Zoom. Yeah, it's via Zoom. And um, in the Patiala Gharana, we're taught to just use the tanpura, not the harmonium. But when we have newer students, the harmonium lends them some support because you can actually play the notes, Saregama uh, Padhanisa, on the harmonium, which you can't on the tanpura. So I do use both instruments. And I have students from that range from the age of seven to 70. And oh, I like saying that because <laughs> there's a, there are children's classes, which cater to children and young adults. And then I have um, adult classes. And I just feel that, um, you know, this gives those generations of people, they're very young and, they're very, and, and kind of middle-aged and older, um, that opportunity that they may have you know, not have had in the past. For example, the children are just learning and that's something they're going to learn and take with them. And for as far as the adults go, they may have not had the opportunity in the past and they had the interest, but they never took it anywhere. And now they're getting this <laughs> opportunity, uh, you know, to learn something of value, something that they can um, actually foster. So it is, to me, it, it's much more than a business. It is uh, basically something that I want to carry forward because my parents had put in so much effort for me to learn it in this country. Aww. And so my mom had always said that, why don't you carry it forward and take the legacy and, and carry forward the torch? And what better way to do that than teach the young and the, and the adults? You are and, very um, inspiring So we do all kinds of ragas. Yeah, yeah, it's very close to my heart. I get very emotional when I talk about this. And um, just to give you a background, we do all the ragas in, in, in Hindustani classical yeah. and all the tarts. And I do the tal because I do have a tabla. So it's taught in a very formal uh, yet fun way. So I'm not, <laughs> not that strict, um, but yet I, I do demand a certain amount from my students. And so they really love it. They really love it. I'm very blessed. 
All right. So speaking on your classical music, I know that classical dance also goes along with classical music. There cannot be any steps without beats. So I belong to also a classical culture. My mother had her own dance school for Kuchipudi and I grew up in her dance school when I was one year old. Literally, I was wow. playing around as a kid when there were a lot of students <laughs> doing their steps and exactly the way you just said, my mom was doing talam at that point. So I've seen that culture very well in my house and that culture was there for 23 years in my life as well. Wow. So I also want to know, like you have gotten some training in Bharatanatyam and what certification you have got in your life about classical dance training um so i learned bharatanatyam i did all the way up to tilana uh, but because i was also learning vocals at the time um my teacher uh, pandit uh, manjit kaur ji she is uh, uh, from the patiala gharana from calcutta she was happen you know she happened to be teaching me my vocals at the time so that kind of overtook in my journey and i never did get my arangetram in <laughs> bharatanatyam which i always wanted to um, but I have danced it all my life. And so I have two daughters, uh, uh -huh. Dr. Trina Chakravarti and then Trisha, my youngest one. Um, so both of them are also Bharat Bharatanatyam trained and I made sure that they got their Arangetam. So I kind of vicariously lived my life through them. But you passed it on. <laughs> yes, I passed it on. So, but getting back to me, um, I have my own um, Bollywood Thunder um, dance group. And so I've been pro bono teaching them um, in our community, uh, a group of ladies, and we perform every Diwali. And um, they're all Bollywood songs, but <laughs> I have a lot of Bharatanatyam steps in them just because I was trained in Bharatanatyam. I did Kathak also for a while, but mainly Bharatanatyam. So even though I didn't get my Arangetram, it certainly has stayed with me. And yes. because my daughters also, also are Bharatanatyam trained and they dance with me. So all three of us kind of um, are in the same group and we, we have, you know, kept that art with us even to this day. So I'm very <laughs> fortunate that, you know, having grown up here, I was able to, able to foster that and keep that with me for all these years. Oh my God, you're, we have exact same situation at home. <laughs> my mom yeah, is a Kuchipudi, exactly. I'm Bharat Natyam and my sister is Kathak. Oh, so wow. we kind of have everything at <laughs> home and we put yeah, one way or other. You should have a jugal bandi then, you know, yeah, one right. person doing one, <laughs> one style. Right. And that's bandi. what I wanted from my husband to play tabla. So we can have everything in one house. That's right. You can be the Von Trapp family. <laughs> <laughs> yep. yeah. um, speaking on Bollywood shows in between, um, we have noticed and we have heard that you have a really good experience um, singing along with celebrities. So tell us more about that. Like okay. what shows you have done and how was your experience? So um, back in 2005 or six, um, I was um, really promoting my singing and there were various competitions all over the country at that point. Before that, there weren't too many competitions. There were no reality shows. There were, um, you know, no big stars who would hold this kind of an opportunity for people who were growing up here for everything. You would have to travel back to Mumbai, which wasn't possible because I was in engineering school. Um, so I remember it started off with the A.R. Rahman um, talent hunt. So that was a big deal. And so um, I sent in my, we used to send CDs back in the day, I sent in my CD. There were about 450 uh, applicants and then I made top 20. So I actually got an opportunity to go to Long Island and sing in front of Mr. Rahman. Oh uh, my uh, goodness. 20 of us all over the United States. And so my journey started then. And since then I had been, in um, doing several Bollywood shows. A um, couple of them were with Abhijit Bhattacharya. He's the um, voice of Shah Rukh Khan. And so he's, uh, he's the one who sang in Chalte Chalte and uh, Mehuna. Huna. Uh, he's, he's, uh, he's, um, he's also Bengali. So yeah. I've, I did a few shows with him. Uh, then I got um, invited to sing at the Sahara Sangeet Awards in San Francisco in front of uh, Mr. Pritam. Pritam Ji is a composer, Bollywood artist. Um, Very nice. Uh, Sankar Mahadevan Ji. Um, and a whole whole host of Sean, a lot of people. So I got to do a, a, a couple of numbers over there in front of those music producers mm -hmm. and directors. And then as of late, um, I was chosen as a judge in a reality show. It's called International Indian Icon. And in season three, um, it was headed up by Jatin Panditji, who is of uh, the Jatin Lalit duo fame. I've heard about uh, that. From yeah. BDLJ and Kuch Kuch Hota yeah. and all those movies, Fana. 
So I got to actually be a judge alongside him, which was yeah. a, such an honor because I was no longer competing at this point. I was actually um, this, you know, I, I was blessed that they gave me that opportunity to, to judge other people. And um, it was an amazing, amazing um, opportunity. And they called me back last year, which was season four in 2022. And I actually got to perform alongside um, Arco, who is the up and coming um, Bollywood um, composer and um, uh, singer, actually. His, his song, Teri Mitti, the national, got the national award, yeah. I believe. And well, the most uh, popular, popular song, song now. <laughs> popular song, yeah, and he's done various other ones like Bagi to um, Jism, Jism to uh, Rustam, a lot of them. And uh, they had some nice things to say about me. So uh, I, I've been very blessed that um, without really pushing myself, I got these opportunities uh, just from, you know, trying to get out there. And I think going back to the pageant again, I think that really helped me because that kind of a platform puts you out there and you get noticed. And, and you know, there are people who watch uh, you sing and who knows who it could be. So to all the other ladies out there, if you have a talent and you want to pursue it, and just for overall confidence, these pageants are just so, so wonderful. I can't even, uh, I don't have enough good words to say about, about it. And I agree. I agree. This, this is an opportunity, basically. Everyone should look at the pageants as an opportunity. And that's where we can showcase our talent very well. Um, also, Aparna, um, I've always seen the woman is multitasker, right? So you're a mother. <laughs> you, you are a daughter. <laughs> So how do you balance your professional career with your personal life? And it looks like you have done a lot of things in your life. So how, how have you balanced both things together at the same time? Um, that's a very good question. Sometimes I ask myself <laughs> that. Um, but, you know, I think I am, I, I've discovered, you know, I got married at a very young age. I got married at the age of 18. So my husband and I kind of grew up together. And I think we just make a fabulous team and we support each other in whatever we do. We give each other enough space, but at the same time, when the, that support is needed, we are there for each other. So I think that has a big uh, role in my life. And I'm thankful for that. And the other thing I, I've found about myself is that I function the best when I'm multitasking. And I think I put out my best and I'm the strongest when I have a lot of things going on in my life. And so being a mother, um, being a mother is one thing and then rearing your children and I have adult children now and two of them are physicians and they have gone through medical school and the trials and tribulations of putting your kids through med school. And then I have uh, a practice that I head up with my husband. He's a pulmonary critical care specialist. Mm -hmm. So when the COVID pandemic hit um, full on, we were front and center and we, there was no vaccination. And so I would pray that, you know, every day that my husband would come home and be unscathed because there were a lot of, lot of deaths going on. So um, that's another part of my life. So the children are another part of my life. But, yeah. you know, in order to keep you happy, yourself happy, I've seen that you also need your own passions and you should definitely hone in on those and make that sort of also your priority. Because, of course, your priority is going to be your family and your career. And, you know, I'm, I'm an engineer, so I also worked in the engineering field. And now the practice, which is a huge responsibility for patient health care, um, especially in the middle of the uh, pandemic. Uh, but if I dance and I sing and I can teach others, which I'm doing right now and ha like have my own group of, of dancers, ladies in the community who just come over for practice. And, you know, it's just a it's just great exercise. It's just this comradeship. And I feel that when you have that um, surround when you surround yourself with all those different experiences, I myself, um, you know, I get to be a much happier person and I function much better. And um, I just feel that, that that's what keeps me going is to be able to um, multitask and be able to do for the community and at the same time do for my children at the same time do for myself also. So I just try to keep it in balance. Of course, you have to prioritize and you have to, you know, there are those days when you're okay, they're like, okay, I can't do this today. This is too much. <laughs> um, but I, I really enjoy what I do. I, I mean, I'm very, very passionate about my singing and my dancing. So um, that is actually an anchor for me. So even on a very bad day, you know, I'll sit down and do a raga for 10 minutes and my mood will be alleviated. So yeah. those yeah. things are, are really things that I, I value and I have tried to pass that on to my children as well. 
So that was another big responsibility that I wanted to make sure whatever my parents taught me in, in the midst of uh, you know, a foreign country where there were not too many opportunities, uh, I wanna make sure that doesn't yeah. get lost and yeah. that I can pass it on to my children. I've been lucky that my, my children have um, taken on, you know, and then my youngest, Trisha is a very good singer. She's a dancer, also part Natyam dancer. Trisha, um, Trina is a, is a part Natyam dancer. My son plays the tabla, attempts to play the guitar. So <laughs> with the boys, it's always a little bit more <laughs> difficult. <Yes. laughs> but um, he's also done his part. I can't say that he hasn't. And um, so I, I really enjoy that. You know, I, I really enjoy um, having a lot of hats to wear. And I feel like I function uh, at my best, you know, my best version of myself is that person who's doing it all, you know. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and I agree because nothing can make us more happier than other than following the passion. Um, I think even I've seen it in a lot of places, like people who really follow the passion, yes. they're, they're more happier because they're, they're happy from their soul. Yes. Like they like what they're doing. So that's something is very important. Um, what's your key to success? Um, <laughs> my key to success is, you know, everybody has a def different definition of success. And um, so for me, it kind of leads, it's a lead on question from what I just said is that um, to, have, to have a balance in life, you know, that is I think key. And I think if you are balanced um, uh, and, and mentally, especially mentally, if you are balanced and you're at peace, I think that will lead you to enormous success because that will make you that happy person who can be that really wonderful wife or that awesome mom or, uh, even for yourself, you know, in your career, you're going to blossom. Uh, and to keep it all together, you have to have balance. And I also always tell everyone uh, simplicity is another factor that I tend to go back to, you know, the smaller things in life, which give you pleasure and, and uh, true gratification, um, you know, just work for the, working for the temple, or doing a show for a charity, which you know that um, this is something that will go back to maybe the children in India or, or go back towards the school for Ekal Vidala. Those are, you know, Umid, Umid the Hope is another charity that I, um, I'm very, very close to. And, um, and uh, we have done several of these charity shows, especially during the pandemic. And we have done things online when we couldn't really go out and, and do shows on stage. And I, I just felt that was such a blessing. So, so to keep it together and to have a successful life, I think um, you have to, uh, you have to really harness the simplicity in life and also also keep everything in a balance if you can. And that's the key to my success, I think. <laughs> Very well said. <laughs> Very well said, Aparna. Um, I agree on a lot of points you just mentioned. And those are the really factors that we all need to keep it in our mind as well moving forward. Like those things are very important. Those small things, it looks small, but they, they are really big impacting in our lives. Yes. Um, speaking on pageants again, back to the your worldwide <laughs> preparation, um, I know you are going to represent United States to the worldwide pageant, and that's a great honor, um, representing a country on the international platform. On top of it, looks like pageants is in your blood, in your family's blood, because your daughter has been, I think, worldwide winner in the past. Yes. So talk more about uh, worldwide experience with your daughter and what preparations are you doing for yourself to represent the country uh, for the international platform? Sure. So this is the first time for me um, uh, as a person uh, going to uh, the international level. Mm -hmm. um, there was another pageant I did way back in uh, like 2004 where um, uh, it was nationals and, but I, you know, I did not go to the international. Um, but um, as far as my daughter, um, my daughter, uh, my oldest daughter, uh, she's uh, Dr. Trina Chakravarti. She is an OBGYN and she's practicing. Um, they live in Maui, Hawaii. She and her husband and her little baby. Wow, what a on. wonderful place to live. <laughs> Great for me, I get to visit all the time. Right? Um, yeah. <laughs> So they, they chose that, you know, and Trina's always been that way. She's always been very, um, very different in her needs and her wants and her way to way to live her life. Mm -hmm. So when she uh, competed, um, uh, when, when, when she was 16 or 17, I told her about 
um, Miss India USA because I told her this is a wonderful pageant. I've done it as a teenager. Give it a shot. So she did it as she was a second year, first year, first year um, undergrad at the time at UF here in Florida. Mm -hmm. And um, she really didn't prepare much for it. I mean, it was just, this was, you know, one of her first times, but um, she's a lucky girl and she um, won Miss India uh, Florida, then Miss India USA. And then we went to Mumbai for the world pageant. Oh my God. And um, there were 23 young ladies from all over the world or 24 young ladies from all over the world, um, Germany, Netherlands, Australia, you name it, everywhere, South Africa. And um, she basically is one of those girls, my daughter, who, you know, she was taking, I think, organic chemistry at the time. So she had her book there and, I, and, and parents were not allowed backstage. So to help the, the, the children I, at that time, they, nobody was allowed except for the yeah. makeup artists and, yeah. um, you know, I, IFC um, uh, personnel. And so I would tell her, you know, uh, make sure you get your makeup done and make sure. And I would see her sitting on the sofa, you know, with her glasses and just reading her book. And I would say, <laughs> when are you going to be gone? Oh, it's fine. And she was very, very casual and laid back about it. But I think that's what worked for her. because She kept a very even temperament. Yeah. Uh, she never, yeah, she never really um, uh, pushed herself or, or, or you know, uh, or in, in that sense that she was very calm and collective. And um when she came out on stage, I was really wowed because her question and answer went off so, so well. I think that sealed the deal and her talent, she got best talent. And for her talent, actually, I had helped her. Um, I wanted to talk about how I supported her. Um, I, at that time, had a five-year-old daughter. So there's oh, a big gap yeah. between my oldest daughter and, my, and Trisha. So with her, I had to support my teenage daughter who's competing. So I did my best and I think the best way I helped her is by um, she and I both kind of choreographed her talent portion with Bharatanatyam. It was a fusion at the time. It was a, it was very new at the time to do a fusion. Now it's very pretty commonplace, but <laughs> at that time we we did um ARM on Stal Setal Mila and <laughs> with some Western influences on Bharatanatyam. Very nice. And very he nice. um, bagged the best talent uh, in, in worldwide. And so we were very proud of her that her, her you know, her Bharatanatyam um, capabilities got recognized at this level and in the international level. So um, that was her experience. As far as my experience, um, you know, we're just so happy to be doing it. We're so excited because we were locked down with COVID for two years now. For a long time. Yeah. For a long time. And um, nothing can be more exciting than, you know, doors opening up being invited to go and you know compete in this um international pageant so we're very very excited i think all the ladies out there are going to be preparing very well and everybody's going to come in and do their best and that's what makes it so exciting and amazing that is i'm just thinking it's going to be mind-blowing it's going to be such yeah. a great <laughs> and i'll tell you a little bit on my experience as well right when i went to worldwide i pretty much had a same mindset like you like i'm just going in just like your daughter i'm just going in whether we win or lose, we are the winners in our mind already yeah. <laughs> because we already have achieved a lot in the life, right? So yeah. I had prepared myself properly for that show. But hey, that experience gives us a lot um, yeah. regardless of we are bringing back the crown or not. But that experience yeah. stays with us lifetime. And that yeah. is more important to me. And that's what yeah. I tell every single person. Um, so it's a great show. It's a great journey and a um, lot to come on the plate for that. And I'm sure uh, there's a lot of preparation do you are doing already. So wish you all the very best. Thank you so much. I'm really excited about the journey. And I mean, of course, the destination is there and we all vie for that. But, um, you know, it's just the journey is just so fabulous. So I'm just so excited. Yep. And then a lot of connection, a lot of friends mm -hmm. we make for with the yes. other countries, right? That yes. that I was so much excited about that as well. And I'm still in touch with my other misses from different countries too. Yes. We are one and of all the, the best friends now. All the diversity we, we pick up on. And, you know, that's what makes the world so much more smaller now because we get to meet all these people from all over the world. It's and, a great you know, experience. Yeah, we <laughs> imbibe their culture and we get to learn so much on that level. And it's such a, it's really such a, such an awesome experience for everybody. It is, yeah. it is. And speaking on pageants, I do want to ask you what advice you would like to give it to the ladies 
who haven't tried the pageants in the past yet. <laughs> so there are a lot of, lot of viewers who are watching us on Mana TV International today. And if you guys haven't tried the pageants, let's give them some advice so they know what they're missing out. Yes. So most definitely, if you look at my life journey, I started at the age of 16. And, you know, today I'm standing in front of everybody or sitting in front of everybody. And I feel that, you know, I've come a full circle. And yeah. for me to come that full circle, you know, through that journey, I have attained an engineering degree. I've mm -hmm. helped my husband go through his residence in pulmonary critical care. I've raised three children, two of whom are physicians. Mm -hmm. um, I just believe that the pageant is just so much more um, uh, than a beauty, uh, than, you know, judge, judging the beauty of somebody. It really makes that person um, who they are. It, it kind of uh, gives them uh, that boost to be the best version of themselves. Yeah. And if you, if you use this platform correctly, uh, and there's no way to use it incorrectly. I mean, but if you do use this platform, it's only going to make you that much more confident, that much more sure of what you want to attain in life. And, you know, when you are, when you become so mentally um, uh, set and know yourself as to who you are as a person due to this pageant, that can only do wonders in your life as a mother, as a, as a wife, um, you know, to, to follow your, follow your talents, your passions that you may have to explore them further. Uh, it's gonna, it's, it's really a road to self-discovery. And I feel that that is just so important for women, um, you know, to know who you are and it, it really helps um, going through the pageant journey um, and you pass it on to your children, which is the best, you know? So I would recommend it highly for women of uh, all ages, uh, no matter what juncture of life you're in, um, no matter where you think you're standing right now uh, in your journey of life, it is for everybody. And I, I truly believe that because there is so much positive to be gained from this experience. Yes. And they should see this as an opportunity because the platform is created by Dharmatma Uncle, right? It's spatially, yes. it's not, we don't find this everywhere. We don't find this type of opportunities everywhere. So it's very rare. And people who really looking forward for some sort of platform to start with, Yes. This is the path. This so the path. I totally agree with you, Aparna, on this. And um, you have done also some charity work in mm -hmm. your life. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm not sure, was it part of the pandemic or you used some of your pandemic time to do the fundraising event? So uh, do talk more about that, how how you get into sure. In fundraising. Sure. So, so for me, you know, charity really does start at home. Mm -hmm. And the what I mean by that is that my husband and I are, like I said, um, uh, we own this medical practice, which is uh, uh, basically to do with lung diseases, pulmonary and critical care. Yeah. So we look after people who wind up on the ventilator. And when mm -hmm. COVID obviously hit full on, you know, we were front and center. And we, we would like to think that, yes, we lost a lot of patients, but we also were able to save a lot. So we try to count, try to save positive and, and talk about the patients that we were able to save. Mm -hmm. um, but that's, that's when pandemic started. But my whole family is basically in, in the healing profession. You know, my husband's a pulmonary critical care specialist. My my son and my older daughter are physicians. So they're always, you know, healing patients okay. with their medical issues. So it's been ingrained in my family. My brother is a cardiologist. So we are all into um, healing the world, so, so to speak. Me being an engineer, I switched gear, but I've been more with the medical um, field now than I did engineering. So I'm very much involved into making sure that our patients get those BiPAP masks and they get those CPAPs when they have breathing issues or if they have asthma or if they have COPD. So we are very much into catering to those who have the, you know, who need, who have the need. Um, as far as working with charities from my own practice, we have made sure that in the middle of the pandemic, when the villages in India were, were really maxing out on the ICU beds and did yes. not have enough medical, medical equipment, um, we basically collaborated from here and made sure that those, those equipments reached those hospitals. And so we did a lot of front frontline work at that time, charity wise and, and um, contributed that way. Um, other than that, I have always been, um, in, uh, you know, very much involved in our temple yeah. here. So I've done various fundraisers from my, from my singing, from my dancing, from teaching mm -hmm. the ladies 
um, dancing and singing and, and, and kind of encouraging them to, uh, you know, contribute to the, to the charity fundraisers by showing their talents. Um, so that and there, I'm also involved in Ekal Vidala, which is a, uh, everybody knows Ekal Vidala is about the schools in India. So I've done several, again, singing shows mainly for that uh, to as fun, fun, fun drive, fundraisers. And Umi, the Hope is another charity that I've been very close to, and I have done several shows for them. Raised uh, last time, we raised about four, four to five thousand dollars, and I also had my uh, daughter sing in that. So the I'm, I'm trying to do it myself, and also um, making sure that my children are also following the same path, and so they are also all involved in in these kinds of charities. So yes, charity is very, very close to our heart because of the profession that we're in. And also because of the fact that um, if you can, uh, if you have a talent, you should be able to put it out there and do some amount of community service with that. Um, and um, that I find is, is very, very soulful, you know, for a lot of people. Um, sometimes I'll do just bhajans or I'll do just classical music. And that really connects to a lot of people, you know, it's very, very, um, it, it's very soothing to them. And it, I, I see not only uh, as a, um, you know, form of entertainment, but it's also very healing. And, and that is, is, is a blessing that I, I'm able to do that for, for uh, our community out here. So, um, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, I hope that I have taught my children so that they can go on and do even bigger and better things. Um, but definitely my husband and I are, um, you know, giving back to the community as much as we can, for sure. Yeah, definitely. It's same thing with me, too. I also have a lot of, and, and it's commendable, whatever the work you have done, it's very commendable. And same thing, like, I also have some experience with charity, and it was very close to my heart, um, the fundraising events I have done. Definitely, it helps. It helps the communities. And also, lot of underprivileged underprivileged people um mm -hmm. they're not getting a lot of things right now mm -hmm. um whatever we can do the best we can do is always good it's always yes. good and a lot of blessings we can get that way as well nothing better than just giving to the people regardless yes. of any purpose Those who are in need i love sure. that yep yes. yep yeah. um any last message or any advice you would like to give it to our viewers for today's episode <laughs> Well, I mean, it was just really a, an honor to be asked. Um, I didn't really um, know or expect it. So I'm very, very blessed that, um, you know, Dharmatma Ji um, put this together. Um, as far as, uh, you know, um, our other, the contestants out there for the worldwide pageant, you know, best of luck to all of them. You know, I'm just very excited to meet everybody now. Um, and then um, also, you know, life in general, like I said, you know, we have to keep things simple, give back to the community as much as we can and um, try and do it all and, and, and do whatever, you know, floats, floats your boat and whatever you're uh, passionate about and keep yourself happy. That's the main, that's the main goal. Um, not by ignoring others, but of course you, you do for everybody because we as women, you know, we have. Uh, it's a teamwork. Enormous, <laughs> enormous responsibility towards family and community and husbands and our careers. But at the end of the day, uh, make sure that you are happy and that you yeah. are pursuing something yeah. that, you know, that really makes you a wonderful person. And that gratitude and that, and, and that self, um, self worth uh, should be preserved in all of us. And that's my ultimate prayer for all the women out there. <laughs> definitely and and Aparna um, definitely thank you for your time today it's a great talking with you there are a lot of stories maybe we can talk offline as well sometimes <laughs> um, there's a lot a lot I would I would definitely talk a little bit longer with you but <laughs> we have to stick it to time for this episode but yes. I do want to mention that thank you for your time today thank you for coming to Mana TV International and talking about your journey experiences thank you Dharmatma Saranankal and the crown ragini sharad and the team of Mana TV International and on top of it our viewers thank you for watching us today and have a wonderful evening everyone Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> Thank you.